Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to be studying the eternal birth and incarnation of the Son of God from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. You see, while the evangelists Matthew and Luke narrate about the earthly birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, St. John begins his gospel with an exposition of the doctrine of his eternal birth incarnation as the only begotten Son of God. The first three evangelists begin their narrative how the kingdom of God received its beginning in time and space. St. John, though, like an eagle, ascends the eternal basis of the kingdom of God and contemplates the eternal existence of him who only in the last days, Hebrews 1, verse 2, became man. St. John calls the second person of the Most Holy Trinity, the Son of God, the Word. It's important to know that the word in Greek, logos, means not only a word pronounced, but also a thought, a sense, uh, a wisdom expressed by the Word of God. That's from, for example, the heart of the Father. When you express yourself, you express your who you are, your essence, your being in words. Therefore, this name of the Son of God means the same as the name wisdom. Uh, see Luke chapter 11, verse 31, and Matthew 23, 34. And St. Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, calls Christ the wisdom of God. The teaching about the wisdom of God is undoubtedly set forth in the same sense in the book of Proverbs. Especially, we see the remarkable passage of Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22 to 30. After this, it's strange to assert, as some do, that St. John borrowed his teaching about the Logos from the philosophy of Plato and his followers. St. John wrote about what he knew from the Holy Scriptures, right? The books of the Old Testament that he learned from his divine teacher and that was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. In the beginning was the Word. Means that the Word, the Son of God, is co-eternal with the Father and the Holy Spirit. John exclaims and explains that this Word, is not separated from God in relation to, to its being, that it is therefore consubstantial with God, right? Con, with substance, complete with substance, con, substantial, with God. And finally, he directly calls the word God in the phrase, and the word was God. Here, the word God in Greek is used without the definite article theos instead of otheos. And this gave rise to the Arians and Origen to assert that the word is not the same God as God the Father. However, this is the indication to the non-merging of the persons of the Most Holy Trinity. The article O in Greek indicates that we are talking about the same subject that was just mentioned. Therefore, if when speaking about the fact that the Word was God, the evangelist would also use the article here, O Theos. Then it would be an incorrect idea that the word is the same God, the Father, which was mentioned above. Therefore, when speaking about the word, the evangelist calls it simply Theos, thereby indicating its divine dignity 
but at the same time emphasizing that the word has an independent hypostatic being and is not identical with the person of God the Father. So St. John revealing to us the teaching about the Son of God calls him the Word and not the Son with capital S. So that when we hear about the Son, we don't think about the uh, passionate or fleshly birth as in a natural birth of a son. As the word is born from the mind dispassionately, so the son is born from the father dispassionately. In the phrase, all was made through him, does not mean that the word was only an instrument in the creation of the world, but that the world came from the first cause of all being, including the Word itself. God, the Father, through the Son, who in himself is the source of being for everything, but not for himself and not for the other persons of the Holy Trinity. So let's look at some phrases from this chapter. The phrase, the life brought light to people, the life brought light to men. This is the spiritual principle, the spiritual life, originating from the word of God, which enlightens people with full, perfect knowledge. Another phrase, and the light shines in the darkness. The word that gives people the light of true knowledge does not cease to guide people even in the darkness. It shines in the darkness. Then the Word took extraordinary measures to bring people who are in sinful darkness to its divine light. John the Baptist was sent to do that. And finally, the Word itself, Himself, became flesh. And then the phrase, there was a man, his name was John. There was, in Greek, is said, enigidio, and genito. For example, John the Baptist occurred, was born in time, and not was not eternal like the word who existed forever, the Greek verb in. Another phrase, he was not that light. So John was not the original light, but shone only with the reflected light of that one true light, which alone enlightens everyone that comes into the world. The world has not known the Word. So what happened? The world did not know the Word, although it owes its very existence to it. What does this mean? And his own did not accept him. That is, his chosen people, Israel, rejected him. Although not all, of course. Those who believed in him to them he gave the right, the privilege to become the children of God, the sons of God. That is, it's the opportunity of a new spiritual life, which, like fleshly life, carnal life, also begins through birth, but through birth not from the flesh, not from carnal lust, but from God, by power, from above. And lastly, the wor word, the phrase, the phrase, and the word became a human being. The word became a human being. Wasn't that beautiful as it's described in the first chapter of the Gospel of John? Wrapped in flesh, the Word became a complete 
perfect man, without, however, ceasing to be God. Full, he was full of grace and truth. By grace, we mean both the goodness of God and the gifts of God's goodness, which opens people's access to a new spiritual life. For example, what it means is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we saw his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. And the apostles really saw his glory, didn't they? They saw it in the transfiguration. They saw it in the resurrection. They saw it in his ascension to heaven. They saw it in the glory of his teaching. They saw it in his miracles. They saw it in his works of love and his voluntary uh, humility, his abasement, right? The only, the last phrase, the only begotten of the Father, for he is the only Son, capital S, of God in his divine nature, right? These words indicate his immeasurable superiority over the small s sons or children of God by the grace that was mentioned above. That's it for today. Thank you for joining us for our class. Uh, welcome. See you next time. Bye-bye.